the module which we talk about is muscular and energy system in exercise. The muscular system is a very important system for exercise. We have a number of muscles across our body. We have the chest muscles, the deltoid muscles, the biceps, the flexors, the abdominal muscles, the quadriceps and the flexors. When we exercise, these muscles contract and relax. When the muscle contracts, the muscle protein, actin, myosin come together to form an actinomyosin complex and this contraction and relaxation of the muscle is crucial for any physical activity which the body takes. The functions of the muscular system include movement. It is only because of our strong muscular system which supports our bones that our joints are strengthened and we are in a position to move our body. We get an entire range of movement through our joints with the help of a strong muscular system. Stability is the second important functions of the muscular system. We know that muscle has receptors, sensors which send sensation to the nervous system to give the exact positioning of the body parts, the limbs and thus the body is in a position to maintain a stable posture. Muscular system also helps in a controlled movement of the various openings of the body and it is through the rhythmic contractions of the muscles whether outside the body or inside the body that the movement, the smooth movements of the openings in the body is facilitated. The muscular system is a very important system for exercise. We have a number of muscles across our body. We have the chest muscles, the deltoid muscles, the biceps, the flexors, the abdominal muscles, the quadriceps and the flexors. When we exercise, these muscles contract and relax. When the muscle contracts, the muscle protein, actin, myosin come together to form an actinomyosin complex and this contraction and relaxation of the muscle is crucial for any physical activity which the body takes. The functions of the muscular system include movement. It is only because of our strong muscular system which supports our bones that our joints are strengthened and we are in a position to move our body. We get an entire range of movement through our joints with the help of a strong muscular system. Stability is the second important functions of the muscular system. We know that muscle has receptors, sensors which send sensation to the nervous system to give the exact positioning of the body parts, the limbs and thus the body is in a position to maintain a stable posture. Muscular system also helps in a controlled movement of the various openings of the body and it is through the rhythmic contractions of the muscles whether outside the body or inside the body that 
the movement the smooth movements of the openings in the body is facilitated in addition to that muscular system also helps in maintaining body temperature because there are receptors in the muscle which in turn send sensation to the nervous system with regards to the body temperature or increase in the temperature at the muscular level and thus there are messages sent to the cardiovascular system through the nervous system to the lungs to reach out to these working muscles and to favor the dissipation of heat at the muscular level so as to maintain the body temperature and that is the reason why when we are exercising the hydration is very very important because it helps the receptors which are conveying the message to the central nervous system to reach out to heart and lungs to do the needful. Let's now talk about the different types of muscles present in the body. We have the skeletal muscle which I just discussed. We have the smooth muscles and we have the cardiac muscles. Let's go one step further to understand each category of this muscle. Now the skeletal muscles are the muscles which are attached to the bones and skin of the organs. These are the muscles which produce body movements, say for example even facial expressions. The mode of control is voluntary. Voluntary means the mode of control is, is up to us. It is our, under our control that we can govern the movement of these muscles. Smooth muscles are the muscles which line the organs, the blood vessel, the delicate parts of the eye. They move content through the organ. They constrict, relax under the influence of the nervous system and most of the smooth muscles have an involuntary mode of control. For example, the blood vessels which run across the body, the vasoconstriction, the relaxation of these blood vessels is governed by the nervous system, the hormones and thus it is all involuntary. Similarly, the walls of the gastrointestinal tract, the various organs which form a part of the gastrointestinal tract are also made up of smooth muscles and their contraction, relaxation, movement is governed again by the nervous system, by the hormones and it is a mixed interplay of the nervous system and the endocrine system which facilitates the whole process of digestion in our digestion, uh, assimilation and movement of contents through the GI tract. Then we have the cardiac muscles which line the or which essentially form the muscles of the heart. Now these muscles are also a type of smooth muscles wherein the movement or the mode of control is involuntary but they are very very strong muscles, they are tireless muscles and they help to pump the blood throughout the body. Let us look at the functions of the muscle. The skeletal muscles are attached to the bones by tendons. As I said earlier, the strength of a joint is the connectivity of the muscle to the bone. So, whenever there is a cross joint, when they contract along with the joint with the help of the muscle. So, it goes without doubt that if our skeletal muscles and the connective tissue joining the muscle to the bone, 
that is tendons are strong, the mobility of our joints will be smoother, we will have more flexibility and less likelihood of injury. The smooth muscles which are present on our organ walls, they undergo contractions, they produce movement of organ contents, but as I said that the functioning of these muscles by far is involuntary and it is governed by the nervous system and the secretion of various hormones. The cardiac muscles produce the contractions of the atrial and the ventricular chambers of the heart and they are also kind of smooth muscles which are very very strong, tireless but the movement of these muscles are also involuntary and is again governed by the nervous system, the endocrine system and these cardiac muscles help in pumping the blood from the heart into the blood vessels. Let us look at the energy systems which work at the muscular level. We have the ATP PC system which includes A lactacid system, creatine phosphate system, phosphagen system, then the second is the lactic acid system which includes anaerobic glycolysis system, lactacid system and the third is the aerobic system that is your aerobic glycolysis. Now when we look at the availability of energy, the currency of energy in the body is ATP that is adenosine triphosphate. This ATP energy lasts for 2 to 3 seconds. This ATP when produced with the help of ATP CP energy system, it may last for 8 to 10 seconds. If it is rooted through anaerobic energy system, it may last for 2 to 3 minutes. And if it is rooted through aerobic energy system, it may last more than 3 minutes. So, in a sense, what we are trying to convey is that there are various kinds of energy system in the body. The ability of the energy system to produce the currency of energy that is ATP varies and even the ability of the energy system to sustain for a certain duration of time also varies with the ATP CP energy system having the least amount of time for which it can sustain and the aerobic energy system having the maximum ability to sustain and provide energy while exercise. Let us understand the ATP CP energy system. ATP is stored in the muscle and liver for quick energy. The nerve impulses trigger the breakdown of ATP into ADP. What is ADP? It is the adenosine diphosphate. When ATP breaks, there is a release of one phosphate molecule. The splitting of the phosphate bond releases energy which is utilized for work or exercise. For example, whether it is muscle contraction, moving of a hand or any kind of activity which we perform as a part of exercise. The ATP molecule as it is clear contains adenosine with 3 phosphate molecules. The breakdown of ATP is the release of energy that is the breakdown of the phosphate bond. So ATP getting converted to ADP plus energy for biological work plus a phosphate molecule that is the adenosine diphosphate getting released. Now for contractions to continue ATP must be rebuilt. That means this ADP which is formed should be reconverted to ATP. How will it happen? 
This comes from the splitting of CP that is creatine phosphate which is a high energy source present in the body especially in the muscle. It is naturally present in the muscle. Sometimes we do find people taking supplements of creatine phosphate. The purpose of getting creatine phosphate is to replenish ATP. When ATP is used, it is rebuilt as long as there is creatine phosphate. Energy released from creatine phosphate breaking down resynthesizes the ADP and phosphate and only small amounts of ATP can be stored that is that is what I mentioned only 2 to 3 seconds of energy and that is why this process of ATP breaking down into ADP and ADP getting reconverted into ATP with the help of creatine phosphate is a normal process which the body continues to do. ATP CP system gives energy for 8 to 10 seconds as I mentioned earlier. Now creatine phosphate when it breaks it gives a high energy bond. So creatine plus energy for resynthesis of ATP and the phosphate bond. ADP plus energy from CP and the phosphate bond becoming ATP. So reversal of ADP will be ADP the phosphate molecule and the release of energy for work. So this is just to summarize that how creatine phosphate helps in releasing the phosphate bond which in turn is utilized by the ADP to form ATP and in this entire process of creatine phosphate releasing the uh, phosphate and the uh, 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 breaking down of ATP to ADP in both the processes when whenever there is a breaking of the phosphate bond the energy is released. The anaerobic energy system as I mentioned is something which happens without oxygen. The activities that require a large burst of energy over a short period of time are the ones which make use of anaerobic energy system. Why does this happen? Because whenever there is an activity which involves large burst of energy, the requirement of oxygen also increases. Very often the rate at which the muscle needs the oxygen to perform that activity does not coincide with the supply of oxygen. So as a result of which the glycogen stored in the muscle is used as a substrate for energy. Let's remember carbohydrate is the only source of energy which can be used without oxygen. So what do we do? We tend to build the muscles which we want to use for heavy intensity exercise. Why do we build the muscles? So that we can store large amounts of glucose in the form of glycogen in these muscles and these glycogen stores come in handy to provide the energy when we are doing these high intensity exercise because they can be mobilized in the absence of oxygen and this is what is called as anaerobic glycolysis. So anaerobic glycolysis would also help in the production of ATP that is breakdown of glycogen to glucose and then to pyruvate without the presence of oxygen. Now since glycogen is stored in the muscle and liver it is available quickly and let me reiterate that muscle is a much bigger source of glycogen as compared to liver. The amount of glycogen stored in the liver can be used up quickly but the glycogen stored in the muscle becomes a very good backup store for any person who is doing heavy intensity exercise or for that matter even enduring 
kind of an exercise wherein you need you may need to use some part of glycogen anaerobically towards the end of an end, a long standing endurance activity whether it is tennis whether it is a marathon run so that towards the fag end of the marathon run or towards the last few sets which a tennis player is playing it is possible that the oxygen availability may not synchronize with what is needed to use fat as a substrate or to favor aerobic you know utilization of substrate and that is where the glycogen stored in the working muscles and uh, that's why it is emphasized that the sports person build up those muscles which are very effectively used in that activity or sport so this system provides atp when atp cp system runs out because that's a very very short lived system of providing energy and the anaerobic energy system also cannot sustain for a longer time because it has its own limitations the process to produce atp is not as fast as atp cp making the muscle contraction slower so even though we use atp cp system the production of atp does not happen at the rate it is it is being used thus these fats can make the muscle contraction slower when oxygen is not present the end product of glycolysis is lactic acid causing the muscles to fatigue this is a very very important point to be understood when we are talking about anaerobic utilization of carbohydrate as a substrate for energy because accumulation of lactic acid in the muscle is the most important cause of muscle fatigue thus it is very pertinent that when we are exercising we are sensitive to the level to which we can accumulate lactic acid in the muscle without the muscle getting fatigued on the other hand if we are working out intensely and we are likely to produce more lactic acid in the muscle then this intense exercise should be followed up with an adequate cool down so that we favor the release of this lactic acid which has got accumulated in the muscle thus understanding anaerobic utilization of carbohydrate as a substrate uh, for energy has a lot of relevance with the muscle fatigue and a lot of training goes in using the muscle effectively so that you maximize the usage to get the energy through anaerobic pathway but you do not overuse it because by overusing the lactic acid accumulation would go up and the muscle will get fatigued and that will hamper the performance or your ability to exercise thus anaerobic glycolysis is less efficient in producing atp than aerobic glycolysis but it is used very effectively for large bursts of energy and especially heavy intensity exercises or even in a game there are spurts of large bursts of energy whether it is a kick of a football whether it is a a fast serve in tennis these are all the in large bursts of energy which are a part of a game which may be endurance which may be more aerobic but then within that aerobic framework also there are parts of the game wherein you will need large bursts of energy and that is where uh, it is possible that when you are playing a sport you may be using aerobic and anaerobic systems of utilizing a substrate so glucose gives 2 atp and 2 lactic acid which is a digested component of carbohydrate glycogen which is a storage form of glucose 
gives 3 ATP and 2 molecules of lactic acid. Now with oxygen what is happening? One molecule of glucose when oxidized through aerobic pathway and the most important aerobic pathway is the Krebs cycle and we know that the oxidation of one glucose molecule with the help of Krebs cycle and electron transport chain produces 36 ATP and the end products as water and carbon dioxide. On the other hand, through Krebs cycle we can even mobilize fatty acids because fats can also be mobilized as substrate only in the presence of oxygen and it releases 129 ATP. Thus, body fat is a greater source of energy. The aerobic energy system makes use of the substrate in the presence of oxygen. This is used by large muscle groups continuously over a period of time. The aerobic glycolysis and fatty acid oxidation leads to the production of ATP from carbohydrates and fat. Now this is a very important point to be understood that when we are utilizing large muscle groups over a period of time and that will happen when we are doing an endurance activity whether we are running a marathon, whether we are playing a game like tennis, any activity wherein we are using large muscle groups over a period of time means we need a sustained supply of energy and to get sustained supply of energy we must oxygenate our body adequately so that enough oxygen is available to use carbohydrates and fat for the pur purpose of energy. The aerobic pathway of energy system happens in the mitochondria of the cell and there is good number of ATP production when we utilize carbohydrates and fat in the presence of oxygen which is a very good asset especially when we are working out or exercising for a relatively longer period of time. In, in the other words I can also mention that if we want to use fat as a source of energy and we want to have fat loss through our workout or physical activity then we must oxygenate our body adequately and keep the intensity of the exercise moderate so that the supply of oxygen is adequate to mobilize fat as a substrate for energy. The moment oxygen enters the system it stops the breakdown of glycogen to lactic acid that means the benefit which we accrue is that there is less of muscle fatigue. So with oxygen glycogen breaks down into ATP and carbon dioxide and water and let's also appreciate that the formation of carbon dioxide and water is harmless to the body because both the byproducts are easier to get rid of. Carbon dioxide is expelled by the lungs, water is used in the muscle. Anaerobic energy source, carbohydrates are the only fuel source which can be used. With prolonged exercise, carbohydrates are the first fuel choice. As exercise continues, fat becomes predominant. So, it is very pertinent to follow that when we begin exercise, it is carbohydrates which come to our rescue to provide energy. It may be through ATPCP system, phosphagen system, but then as we continue with the exercise and we bring in the VO2 max, we mobilize fat for the purpose of energy and this helps in sustained release of energy from fat as well as carbohydrates but in an aerobic mode and doesn't lead to any kind of lactic acid accumulation and thus less of muscle fatigue. Protein is not a main fuel source except in an emergency and thus the preferred source of energy substrate is carbohydrate and
However, each system plays an important role in energy production. And this helps us, gives a variety of movement. The systems interact to supply energy for the activity. Thus, to conclude, let us understand that muscular system of the body is a very important part of an exercise program. There are various kinds of muscles which make our skeletal system. Each muscle has a unique characteristic and that is why it is a part of an integral body system and body part. The muscles use energy to perform and this energy comes through different substrate. The most highly preferred substrate for energy by the muscle is carbohydrate and followed by fat and then proteins. Carbohydrates can only be used in the presence of uh, carbohydrates can be used in the presence of oxygen as well as in the absence of oxygen that is they can be used anaerobically and aerobically whereas fats and proteins can be used only in the presence of oxygen.